Welcome to election 2019, the preliminary election here for the City of Champions. My name is Mark Lindy. I'm the General Manager of Brockton Community Access, and with me is Steve Foote. Good to see you, Steve. Pleasure to Welcome be back. here again, Mark. I'm looking forward to some spirited conversation as usual. Um, we're also joined tonight by uh, two other commentators. We have Ed Miller, who is the host of Stand Up Strong on 1530 AM, uh, WVBF in Taunton. And he's the former chair of the Plymouth County Democratic League. And also joining us is Tom Minicello, who is the Ward 1 school committee member and uh, one of the lone Republicans, right? Oh, well, one of the lone we're pro all proud. We're all balanced, okay? Yeah. Tonight we have Democrat, unenrolled, Republican, and um, yeah, I'm a Democrat too, but I'm, I'm, I'm the moderator. Anyway, so election 2019 is uh, packed with candidates. We have um, seven candidates for mayor, 15 candidates for councilor at large, and then in Ward 1 and Ward 5 today, there are three candidates in each race running for city council. On the uh, September preliminary ballot, there are no races at the moment in the preliminary for school committee. That'll be for the November election. So I'm going to start with Steve. Steve, um, um, you watch this. I know you have all the literature in front of you on the desk, all the different candidates for mayor. What have you seen so far um, in, in this election season? Well, obviously, uh, the two big names are Mark Lawton and um, Robert Sullivan. Uh, Lawton has positioned himself as Carpenter's heir apparent. Uh, and Sullivan being on the city council for the last 15 odd years, uh, they, they have all the experience and the, the names are well known. But you also have um, Gene Bradley, uh, who is also uh, a councilor at large, did very well in the last, his first election. He, now he's running to upgrade to the mayor's seat. Jimmy Pereira can't be undersold. The mayor got 6,000 votes in the last election against an incumbent mayor, Bill Carpenter. So, uh, and there's uh, a few others that. Uh, uh, got in there, Tony Branch, uh, Bishop Tony Branch, as he's known, uh, well known around, school committee uh, member at Southeastern Regional with you. He's well known, drew first position on the ballot, so that's likely to get him a few votes. And then we have the a couple of political newcomers, but uh, again, it should be an interesting evening. We'll see how it all plays out. Well, if you interestingly enough, everything changed, um, unfortunately, on July 3rd. When Mayor Carpenter passed away unexpectedly, um, it was a three-way race at that point mm -hmm. with uh, Gene Bradley Duranacourt and um, Jimmy Pereira running against Mayor Carpenter. And then when he died, all of a sudden the race got much more crowded. Okay, um, people waited, they paid their respects for two weeks, and then all, all, all the horses were out of the barn. Um, Tom, the mayor chairs the school committee. So that is a really important role that the mayor plays. Um, different mayors have been very active as chairs. Some came from the school committee. Some came from the council. So um, what do you think of um, anything that any of these folks have said at all about education and schools? Well, first of all, I think um Mayor Carpenter was very active with regard to the schools. Um, he was very uh, active with regard to the equity and education action that's uh, underfoot right now, underway. He was a huge advocate. Uh, he was key in the planning stages in terms of the next steps. Um, so whoever fills his role is going to have to uh, move into, in my opinion, a leadership position uh, to fill the gap. Um, I believe that uh, where the schools are in a precarious financial predicament, um, a little bit better than we were in the last few years, but still not where we need to be, nowhere near where we need to be, that education um, is going to be huge for the city of Brockton because <clears throat> without strong schools, uh, you don't have a strong city, quite frankly. And that one of the huge components of why people come to Brockton has been uh, because of the reputation of the P Brockton Public Schools, both academically, but certainly with regard to sports and certainly with regard to the arts and all of the um, 
different programs and activities. Uh, so, so, so a healthy school system and a mayor who takes the lead and um, you know, participates and, and, and is a leader is, is gonna be essential. Um, with regard to uh, some of the comments that um, Steve said, I characterize the mayoral um, uh, list of candidates as the big four. I, I think Jimmy Pereira is, is a big candidate. I think Gene Bradley Darrancourt is a big candidate. I think Bob Sullivan and certainly um, uh, you know, Judge Mark Lawton, uh, very big candidates. Um, then I, I, I have a different tier with regard to the mayors. You know, Tony Branch, very well known in the city. Um, but, you know, in terms of doing well in a past elections, not so much. Um, very active, you know, great person. I like Tony very, very much, but I, I don't consider him in the big four. Um, I do consider him ahead of the next tier, uh, you know, Stephen Figueredo and uh, Karina Lisa Mopelas. Um, but um, I, I would say you get the big four, then you have Tony Branch, and then you have the, the, the other two. Um, uh, the mayor's race, obviously, when Mayor Carpenter uh, passed away, uh, became very interested, uh, interesting, I should say. Certainly, with regard to um, you know the entering of the race of you know uh, of Mark Lawton and Bob Sullivan, um, um, and then you know some of the others, naturally. But what also was very interesting is the council, what it did to the council at large field. It basically, to me, totally expanded it because. You know, you have two counselors at large, Bob Sullivan and, um, you know, Gene Bradley Darrancourt, moving, you know, over to try to run for mayor. Um, so we have a lot of, you know, new names, but we do have a lot of familiar names. And certainly we have our veteran names like, you know, Wynn Farwell and, you know, Ann Beauregard and Moises Rodriguez. But, um, you know, we, we have some of the usual suspects. We have, you know, Gary Keith, who is very active in the city, well known, uh, running again. Uh, we have former school committee person, you know, Raymond Henningsen, certainly well known um, throughout the city. Uh, Kevin Borges, Larry Curtis, very active in the Bill Carpenter campaign. Larry Curtis, you know, certainly well known around the city. And, and Kevin Borges, um, you know, a lot of people have noticed uh, you know, how he has been very active with Mayor Carpenter's um, uh, administration and, and, and very likable person. Um, uh, interesting that uh, Ann Beauregard is now making a move to, you know, counselor at large, a big risk, um, seeing that, you know, she won her seat by, I believe, only one vote, right? I mean, mm -hmm. two votes. Sorry. Thanks, Ed, uh, for clarifying. But, I mean, that, a big risk on her part when it went, you know, went in the final countdown when we get, go from round, uh, round one to, you know, final round, round two. Um, so, uh, and then obviously in Ward 1, my ward, uh, very interesting Timmy Cruz, uh, you know, well known, uh, you know, basically uh, very st uh, provides stability, you know, in, in the ward and on the council. Uh, long time, uh, you know, long time serving uh, ward one councilor, you know, does a good job. But you you have the you know entry of you know the the, the political you know uh, might and name of Lawton, which is certainly well known. And then we have you know Mr. Lanus, who is a business owner on on Leach and Parkway. Um, so that's going to be interesting. But, um, you, know, you know, history from the last time, you know, Tom Sedell um, worked his tail off, you know, in the last couple of elections, and he was not able to unseat Timothy Cruz, Tim Cruz. Um, so that's going to be interesting to see how, how this, uh, you know, turns about. But, uh, you know, Tom Sedell certainly was an was a active candidate and, and could not unseat the incumbent, Tim Cruz. So that's going to be very interesting to watch. But, you know, uh, Tim certainly has his reputation and, and has served here in the city very well and, and certainly connected, uh, you know, to, to many people here in the city. Um, so it, I, I find the, the field fascinating. So tonight, you Before know. Before you go to five. Yeah, yeah, sure. I got to cut you. Oh, for two I'm reasons. having too much fun. I know, but I'm going to get back to you. Two things. I want to talk to Ed, uh, go back for the mayor's race for one second, and then I understand Gary Keith is outside in our lobby, and I promised any candidate that showed up here tonight that they could get on TV. But one point, I'm yeah. the only Republican, so that means I get half of the time. Okay, that sounds good. So you guys can there divide you it, you're, you're half up a third, a third, and a there third. There you go, okay. So Ed, um, you and I were talking before uh, we started on air about um, the money in the race, okay? Yeah. I think in the top four that you were talking about, Tom, mm. money says a lot, okay? okay. Yeah. We, uh, uh, a, a, a huge lot. So I know that Mark Lawton 
had almost as much money in the bank as Bill Carpenter did before he passed. Okay, he, he has by far, it's like over $80,000. Um, Bob Sullivan, about over 60. Um, Gene Bradley, about 20, over 20. And Jimmy Pereira, about 18. So that's, that has a, a, an impact on the race, right, Ed? Yeah, I, uh, you know how I look at things sideways. And I always ask the question, why is it happening? When I looked at the money, and, and of course when you have to run for mayor, especially in Brockton, you'll need 60 to 80,000. I don't really consider it that important in the primaries because you're just trying to make it through. But, but what I also looked at, and that was in the article, is where they got the money. And I think that is, I, I think that is important when you look at Jimmy Pereira, who may have raised the least but it, 70 percent came from Brockton. And when you look at um, Bob Sullivan, about 40 percent came from Brockton. So this, you know, it's not half, of course, but when you look at Mark Lawton raising $81,000, he only raised 25 percent of that in Brockton. Remember, the, well, those people who are donating money, especially for Jimmy Pereira, Bob Sullivan, um, they're the ones who are going to come out the vote. Also, what I think is, who has the best ground game? And I've been watching all the races, and I think uh, John Bradley, Darren Court, and Bob Sullivan looked like they had a ground game. Not saying that any, but the others didn't. But those looked like tight ground games, uh, and, and they were out there all the time. I think that's going to be the advantage, and I think Jimmy's going to have the advantage because of the people who donated are going to vote for him who live in Brockton. Um, for someone like Mr. Lawton, people are going to come out and vote for him, but most of his money came from out of state. Out of state or out, out of, of state? Brockton? Out of Brockton, I'm sorry. I think Gene uh, had Gene was money, in money out of state. Yeah. So um, we're going to talk some more about that. Yeah. I'm going to kick it to Steve for the moment, and uh, I'm going to take my microphone off, and I'm going to go over to the other set because Gary Keith is uh, in the building. We have video that I want to get to as well that we shot out in the field earlier. So, Steve, I'm going to uh, kick it to you, and I'm going to go walk over to the other set. Okay. So, uh, Ed, uh, to expand on what you were just saying, uh, I looked at the finances as well, and it uh, looked like Robert Sullivan got a lot of money from um, SEIU. Yes. Which is, um, I would say, a predominantly minority union, where a lot of where a lot of people assume that Gene Bradley and Jimmy Pereira will pull most of the minority votes. But then again, if that union is donating to Sullivan, maybe the minority vote will not, you know, go as go to the two minority candidates or and Tony Branch as well, I guess. Uh, the way some people may think. I, I don't know. Well, wh one of the things is, I, I think that if you can pull a few votes away, and also the firefighters, uh, the Brockton Firefighters Union has endorsed uh, Bob Sullivan here in Brockton, uh, as far as I understand. Uh, so we, we do see that coming up. And the, so the, it's going to be a tight race. I, I, you know, a lot of people with uh, Mr. Lawton, I keep on hearing, because people call my show, People come in and, and talk about it, and they do feel that since he did live out of the city for 25 years, that I think that's going to be a, a draw away from him. Uh, again, as you're talking about the minority votes, if uh, Bob Sullivan can pull 5 percent, 10 percent away from the other two candidates, that that could be a game changer. Yeah, and then and then you'll also have Tony Branch there as well, you know, getting his share. Right. And he's listed first on the ballot, and I'm big on uh, ballot positioning. You know, I think that means a lot. And, uh, but Mark Lawton obviously has had decades of, of experience raising money and, and knowing all these different people from different walks of life where he could, where he obviously was able to draw a, um, a big uh, amount of a war chest. See, uh, I, Tom, I, how, do you, how do you see that? I, I think you're underestimating Mark Lawton because I think that Mark Lawton um, is an extremely driven person. His, his name um, is certainly well known here in Brockton. He has brothers who live here in Brockton. He has nephews that live here in Brockton. He was the you know, key to the uh, Mayor Carpenter win. I mean, he raised 
um, basically, I would say he's, he was the driving force of raising um, you know, Bill Carpenter's war chest. And then, in a matter of um, a couple of weeks, he raised huge money for himself. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but he and his family have a lot of ties to this community. You can say that you know, he, he, he's lived in Bridgewater for 25 years. Well, that's true, but there are a lot of people that the Lawtons, and there are a lot of Lawtons, grew up with here in Brockton and still live here in Brockton. A lot of the money that he received, yeah, it's people that live outside of Brockton, but they have businesses here in Brockton, and they um, have strong ties, and they have relatives, um, employees here in Brockton. And I think that, um, you know, with regard to the, the ground game, um, I think there are a lot of people in the Carpenter organization that are working uh, for, out of loyalty for uh, Mark Lawton. So I, I do not um, minimize uh, his um, candidacy in any way, shape, or form. Uh, yeah, this could, this uh, could go uh, a lot know. of different ways. And, 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 now, and with regard to Jimmy Pereira, I think he's a great candidate, too, because, I mean, look how well he did against Mayor Carpenter, exactly. you know, uh, against my friend Bill. He, he, he did extremely well. Um, the Cape Verdean community is a very loyal community here in Brock. Um, He's very well spoken. He's an intelligent person. He, uh, I think, carries himself very well. And the same for you know Gene Bradley Darrencourt. In such a short time, um, Gene Bradley has an incredible story. Uh, people love his story. I mean, you know, he was invited to um, <clears throat> State of the Union address. Uh, he, um, you know, has worked in Boston. You know, certainly for Senator Brady. Uh, he has, I think, very good and strong ties to Deval Patrick. Um, he has great ties to the uh, Haitian uh, and minority community, and people like him. Um, you know, I certainly like him. A lot of people in this city like him. Um, so he's not someone to be. Um, yeah, you can't underestimate no, the fact that both of them ran in no, city right, right. My only concern too. about about Gene is that you know he only served one term as a councilor at large. Right, right. I personally, if he asked me what I thought, I would have said to Gene, Gene, people like you. People really like you do another term or two, you know, have some accomplishments here in Brockton, and I think the sky will yeah. be the limit. I just think he pulled the trigger a little too fast. Mm -hmm. I would have just said, hey, put in a little more time. You will be, he would be one of those incumbents that you cannot knock off as a counselor at large. <coughs> some he, people he may think, you, you may be right, uh, some people think, may think he moved too fast. And uh, right now, I guess we'll kick it over to Mark Lindy. He has a special guest for us, and uh, Mark, take it away. Thanks, Steve. Um, I have Gary Keith, a uh, candidate for Council at Large. Gary, uh, former planning board member, zoning board member, yes. uh, running on the slogan, Experience Matters, which a few people, I think, co-opted your slogan during this campaign. Yes, so oh, I know. <laughs> I kept telling them, keep plugging me. <laughs> so you've been out there. You've run for this seat. This will be time number four. That's time number four. Okay. Yes. Um, and you, you, perseverance alone, you should definitely get in the, in, in the top eight. I sure what do you think? So. You know, you never know until it's over. You know, the, all you can really do is get out there and do the work, you know, and um, like I said, win or lose, I'm back out there tomorrow helping and serving and doing what I can. You know, um, you would like to see that you're making some progress in it. You know, it is fourth time as a charm, but um, I don't see an end, you know, I, I don't see an end to uh, me running you know, no matter what happens and stuff, you know, um, and I do it for the city. You Anything know. different this time around during the campaign? I mean, you've well, been in the race yes. before and there's been 15 or 16 candidates. That's nothing new. <laughs> right, that's nothing new. The last two times, though, believe it or not, I, as you know, um, I could barely walk. Um, I had my left knee replaced um, last June. Um, so the last two elections, um, I barely knocked on doors. Okay, basically a lot of people knew me. I was taking a lot of easy routes of greeting, meeting and greeting people at the, at the malls and at the supermarkets and things like that. I, walk, I could walk one or two streets and believe it or not, I was done. Mm -hmm. To do as good as I did do without knocking on any doors basically um, was a miracle. This year here, I was able to get out there. I'm ready to play basketball, it feels like sometimes. So I. I walked the city, I knocked on doors, um, but the amazing part was how many people actually knew me, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, that was amazing, but I guess that's what happens when you run four times, you know? As far as the experience goes, you're touting your, your, your um, 
experience in city government. Yes. Four years on four years planning. two different boards. Four and years those zoning. are comprehensive boards. Planning and zoning, my dad was on the planning board years ago. Mm -hmm. That is fine detail. That is a yeah. lot of work, a lot of maps and understanding all sorts of things and then throw zoning in with it and Correct. it's even more complicated. But you also, we were talking um, off air and when I interviewed you, uh, management experience, law enforcement experience. Yes. Um, are you feeling good about this race? There, are, there I mean, you gotta get into the top eight Correct. from the 15. Do you feel you're gonna get into the top eight? I think so. I think so. You know, um, the people, all the, um, the text messages I've got, and then the people that I, I spoke to, basically, um, which, uh, that were calling me or whatever form of communication they used, and telling me that they just, you know, voted for me. Um, and then people that uh, just saw me and that I don't even know that, you know, said, I just, I just cast a vote for you. You know, so I'm feeling pretty good about it, you know. Um, like I said, and those, I know the people that know me voted for me. There was, these are people that I didn't know. Okay. And, um, but um, I had one person tell me today when I pulled over at a couple today as I was going over to the Hancock School, just to ask them if they voted and to introduce myself. Uh, as soon as I pulled over, I said, hi, how you doing? The lady said, um, how you doing, Gary? And I said, oh, you know who I am? She goes, of course we know who you are. She said, you, you're always out there working. And she introduced me to her neighbor that was, she was talking to. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was really, that, that really shocked me. You know, so um, I'm feeling good. But again, you know, you never know what's going to happen. All the candidates have been out there working hard, you know, for the last four or five months. And, um, you know, basically whoever did the job of getting to the, uh, the voters and getting the vote out actually might. Um, I don't look at it as winning or losing. Like I said to someone last night, for any of us, the one with the, the, that gets the votes, the, the most votes, actually puts themselves in a position to... Uh, represent the city, you know, and if they do the good, if they, we put the right person in there and they do the right job, then the city wins. But um, other than that, there's no winners or losers out of the candidates. We all did a great job. That's how I felt too. Yes. Well, thank you for being the first person to come into thank the you. studio. And uh, where are you going from here tonight? You know, the last couple of uh, elections, I actually went home on election night and went to sleep. I found out the results the next morning. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to catch up with a couple of the other uh, candidates and uh, see what happens. Plenty of places to go tonight. Gary, thank you, you so much. Don't run away because I'm going to take your mic off and I'm going to kick it back over to Steve Foote. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mark. Uh, and thanks to Gary Keith for dropping by to say hello to us and uh, give us a rundown of what's been happening today. And speaking of that, uh, that brings us to the counselor at large race where it's kind of an unusual situation. We have 15 candidates Hey, before that, that we move to Councilor at Large, can I say one more thing about the mayor's race? Oh, sure. Um, well, in terms of, like I was saying, the big four, then you have Bob Sullivan, okay, who's certainly been incredible in terms of vote uh, getting for his position as Councilor at Large throughout the city in, in many elections, the top number one vote getter. Um, and he has an incredible ground game uh, in terms of sign locations and signs, uh, standouts. All the time I've seen him out there, and I've seen in the mornings, like you said, um, the firefighters supported him. I've seen many times uh, big groups of, of firefighters as well as average Brocktonians and an ability to raise money. Um, so he, he to me, is one of the stronger candidates as well. Um, so this is going to be a very interesting race between those, to me, those big four candidates. But um, we, uh, I don't think you can count any of them out. But uh, I, I think Sullivan definitely has... Uh, has the ground game uh, over everyone in this election. Okay, so Bob Sullivan, you can't say we shortchanged it tonight. Uh, so back to the back to the counselor at large race. Ed Miller. And as soon as you're done with that, I gotta go to video because we have video that we got out in the field. So I'm gonna have Ed. I'll tell talk. you what. Why don't Why don't we just go right to the video, okay. Mike, and then we can uh, we'll sure. see what they had to say. Let's take a look, and I'm not sure which one is queued up first. Um, we have. Um, the Ward 1 City Council race, the Ward 5 City Council race, the Council at Large race, and the Mayor's race. So if you could, uh, anybody give me an idea on which one we can uh, take a look at first. Um, through the wonders of technology, I went out in the field earlier today with uh, our own Aaron Tebow, and uh, we uh, took a look at, um, you know, the, the, the different races again. 
it's hard to get to 15 people. I think we got to about six, if I'm not mistaken. So let's go to Ward 1 race, which is uh, currently held uh, by Tim Cruz. Steve Lane is new candidate for city council in Ward 1. What brought you out to run for council? I just thought it was time for a change. I got, yeah, I got a business downtown Brockton, so. Uh, there's a lot of uh, homeless and, uh, you know, the situation down there, so. I sure do. We have our so, cable station downtown. What's your business downtown? It's the dry cleaners, Legion Parkway Cleaners. Oh, okay. Down okay, there, good so. to know. Good to know. Okay. Yeah, so we deal with that regularly, every day, so. Okay. Something has to be done down there. Um, so Ward 1 um, isn't downtown. It's the west side of Brockton. Um, but being a city councilor, you deal with citywide issues. Even though you're a ward councilor, you get all the calls and everything for anything that's wrong. Right. Um, what's your number one thing that you want to focus on? I know. Public safety. Public safety. Definitely okay. public safety. Okay. Um, public safety, education. Uh, now our kids have different, uh, different problems they have to deal with. Sure um, do. There's drugs now that come in uh, candy form and uh, cyberbullying and a yeah. bunch of different. Uh, bunch of different uh, things that we had to grow up with, you know. What's going on, Mac? How you doing? Good. How are you? Um, how you how's your day been? It's it's been busy. It's nice. going to be busier. It's a uh, it's it's like a Super Bowl. I know. It's so the final couple hours. Political family, yep. Lawton family. Yep. Uh, I go way back. I was 14 years old. That's when I met Mark Lawton. Yep, yep. Uh, City council. Yep. What are you thinking? Um, and how's be your day been? Day's been great. Long day. I've been up since uh, 5:30, holding signs since 7. But uh, Brockton, I've you know everyone knows my family. Uh, I don't want to talk a lot about myself. I own a small business in Boston, and I live on Santee Road. I've had a house there for four years. I love Brockton, and I see a lot of potential in the city, and there's a lot of stuff that we could do, but I just think it would be nice to have a change, have some fresh blood in City Hall, and because it's always good to have a fresh perspective on some things, and I'd like to see Brockton have some sort of an industry, a big business come in, I want to see jobs coming back, if they could be manufacturing, if you could incentivize big companies to come down and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, invest in Brockton. That's what my slogan is. You go on my website, invest in Brockton. And I'd like to see something happen with the fairgrounds. Now, obviously, there's not going to be a casino. You know, I'd love, I love to see an, an industrial park with, you know, businesses and you could have jobs. Or yeah, like you know, you could have a lot of stuff. And, you know, I have my neighbor goes to Brockton High, nice kid. And uh, he said to me the other day, he goes, DJ, I want to own a business one day too, but where do I start? I said, he goes, I don't really have any business classes at Brockton High. You know, I'd like to see stuff like that happen in Brockton High and have some after school stuff. Southeastern kids. Regional, that's where, that's where it goes well, for business know, classes. Well, okay. you know what, Brockton High could have a great, if they taught, if they encouraged a lot of kids in Brockton to start their own businesses after they got out of high school, you know, you might see a lot more restaurants, mom and pop places or small Just keep them here yeah. instead of them moving yeah out. and you know a lot of my friends said to me when i moved to brockton why would you buy a house in brockton and it's because i love brockton and my family's from here and this year i was touched by billy carpenter so much that when i and when i saw all the other candidates that wanted to run for the the city that was that was very inspiring for me to see 46 people go out and put their yeah. names and actually some people have no experience in politics just like me I'm, I'm lucky I have my, my uncle and my father and right. my grandfather and other people that, have, that I can look to. But that was very inspiring. So I'm, it's an honor to be out here and talking to you. And like I got my neighbors and friends and family. And uh, so, Almost yeah. In November, right? Yeah, exactly. That's what, the, that's what the dream is. Yep. Thank you. Good yeah. to see you. Oh, no, I can't wait. And, and if any of you guys don't want to pop by my house or call me, go on my website, you know, I'm always open to talking to people, meeting new people, and uh, getting their thoughts and insights. Yeah, that's what I that's what, what I want to do. Well, we'll be yep. live at 8 o'clock, and if you feel like popping by the studio, you're welcome down there. Well, I'll be down there, yeah. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you. All good right, to good see stuff. you. Yep. Tim Cruz, candidate for re-election, Ward 1 City Councilor. Um, what's your day been like? Uh, what are you thinking out here in, in the field? Uh, it looks like a pretty good turnout, which I'm not surprised at. It's a pretty hotly contested mayoral race, and there's a lot of at-large candidates bringing your vote out. So it looks like it's going to be a... Not a huge turnout, but a pretty good turnout. I'm guessing 20, 25 percent, which is high for preliminary. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been at Hancock School part of, here part of the day. I've been at West Junior High part of the day, down at uh, Holly Street at the uh, Brockton Housing Authority. So just getting around, hitting the polls, mm -hmm. uh, visiting with people, and doing some sign holding. Great to see so many people out. I mean, there are a lot of elections where it's me and one or two other people standing here. So it's nice to have so many people getting involved and uh, getting in, into the process.
Now, um, you've been a city councilor for a while, and I know some of the other candidates are using this, ex this slogan, Experience Matters. Does that matter with Ward 1? Well, I think it does, and particularly not just Ward 1, but as you know historically, every 10 or 15 years there are kind of big changes, and with the untimely demise of Bill Carpenter, there's some changes. No matter what happens, we're going to have at least three new city councilors, and we're going to also, well, at least two new city councilors, and uh, we're also going to have a new mayor. No, the mayor will be somebody probably with some experience, but the city council is going to need some experience and leadership to be there. So in this case, I think my leadership and my experience really does make a difference to make sure both of the people running seem to be really nice people, and I really know they're in it for the right reasons. But uh, right now we need the experience to be there to help the council navigate those waters that are going to be pretty choppy over the next six or eight months with, with so much change. Onward to November? Onward to November, I hope. From your, your mouth to God's ears. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. And those were the candidates for city council in Ward 1. Uh, we do have some results that I've gotten uh, through the magic of text. They're actually uh, unofficial. Everything's unofficial results till we get them from the uh, Register of Voters office, um, and then they get certified at a later point. I have 1B and 1A. I'm just going to go over the numbers. I'll talk to Tom a little bit and we'll get your reaction, gentlemen. Um, I'll start with 1A. Um, we're not going to put numbers up on the screen because we're going to do all of Ward 1 together. But the numbers that I have, and they are a picture of the tape which uh, the candidates get over at City Hall. Um, um, DJ Lawton, 69 votes in 1A. Tim Cruz, 160. Uh, Steve Lanes is 89, few write-ins for a total of 321 votes. That's usually the lowest voter turnout. That's Holly Court and, and Ward 1. 1B, which is West Middle School, um, the results are DJ Lawton, 113 votes, Tim Cruz, 359 votes, uh, Steve Lanes, 134 votes, and a couple of write-ins for a total of 608 votes. So that's almost double. 1A to 1B. We do not have 1C and 1D yet, officially or unofficially through text. Um, and I do know that the numbers, um, it, it, you know, in the afternoon were, were about 20 percent. I didn't get the final numbers yet. The elections office predicted 20 to 25 percent turnout. Tom, what do you think of the Ward 1 numbers as we have them already? I, I think they're very good for Tim Cruz. I think that. Um Tim's doing very well in 1B and 1A. I think that 1C and 1D are going to turn out very strong for him as well. Um, with regard to, you know, uh, Mr. Lanus and certainly Mr. Lawton, uh, they're, you know, pretty close to each other in terms of the numbers, um, uh, that they're, they're sort of splitting. Um, you know, Tim Cruz is, is huge in Ward 1. Um, you know, uh, Tim was uh, certainly a big part of, you know, the units administration, certainly has all of the um, uh, strong <laughs> connections, um, you know, with you know the big political names, you know, of of, of that era, you know, Units, Waldron, um, um, uh, Kennedy, Cruz. Um, so, so you know, I, there's a funny dynamic, you know, where where you know you have you know Mark Lawton running for mayor, and then you have Patrick Lawton running for you know Tim Cruz's seat. I guess what I'm saying is that where you have a, a, the Lawton name competing against, you know, a, a, a big-time incumbent, I would say, in Ward 1, I, I don't think it sort of helps the situation um, overall because I, I think that, you know, people that uh, may, may not care for one candidate or the other are going to basically say, well, you know, I, I really like Councillor Cruz. He's done well. so." Uh, I, I think they're going to reward him you know, with, with those votes, and I think it could have uh, a chilling effect on Mark Lawton's mayoral campaign that, that Tim and his constituency is being challenged, so I, I think that there might be some fallout on the mayoral side where um, you know, a Lawton is, is challenging you know, Tim Cruz. Because people might get uh, confused. Um, Not confused, but, but but basically, you know, Timmy has a, 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 a strong, um, a strong loyal following in Ward One. So people in Ward One, I think, are not going to take too kindly that like Tim Cruz, uh, to him being challenged by, you know, 
you know, Patrick Lawton and then think that they're going to vote for Mark Lawton. You know what I mean? That, that, that it, could be, it could be a negative effect for Mark, you know, without Mark, you know, doing anything, you know, wrong to, you know, Tim right. Cruz. I'm just saying that, you know, because people are loyal to Tim, he's got such a good, strong following. He's been, you know, a, a very competent um, and uh, well-respected uh, city councilor in Ward 1. I think that this was the wrong time for a Lawton to challenge Tim Cruz in Ward 1 when you have a Lawton running for mayor and you want all the votes you can get. I would think you would garner and value, you know, the votes that uh, and, and influence that Tim Cruz has in Ward 1 as opposed to being challenged by, you know, the same name that's running for mayor. I have one D now as well coming in. Um, I have uh, DJ Lawton with 140 votes in one D. Tim Cruz with 485 votes in one D, and uh, and um, Steve Lanes with uh, with 182 votes. So that's 810. One D is always the strongest turnout, yeah. biggest turnout, and all we're waiting for is is one C at this point. So the trend is continuing. Yeah. Cruz in all three. Um, I I can't really peek at it, but I have counts at large, but I only have like one name down at the bottom, so I can't really give you any numbers there. Um, I'd be hard-pressed to say that Tim is going to not be moving on in the number one spot for Ward 1. Okay. You know, and, and, and he will be very, uh, uh, very hard to beat. Um, I think, like you know, he basically said, you know, what you need right now in these sort of unsteady times, you know, we've got, uh, you know, we've got uh, a mayor who unfortunately left us far too early. Um, that was certainly a big shake-up. We have, you know, Superintendent Smith, who just left us in terms of the schools. So you have two huge positions. Um, you have movement in the city council, you, you know, new councilors. I think there's something to be said for um, competent, stable leadership, and, and, and I would agree with him in, in, this, in this instance. Well, I always say that um, when you're balancing out 11-member city council, seven-member school committee, um, like the library board that I serve on, it's always good to have a mix of experienced members, mid-experienced members, and then maybe a few newcomers so you can balance it out. Our, our library board was like 3-3-3. Three, three, and three. It worked out really well because everybody, there's an institutional history and uh, also there were new ideas and fresh new ideas on the table too. Not that any of the people that have been there for a long time didn't have new ideas, but um, w when you have like, you know, we went um, and we became very diverse on the, uh, on the library board with uh, Mayor Carpenter's and po appointees. So all we're waiting for is 1C. Uh, other two gentlemen, do you have any comments on, uh, on yeah. Well, one? obviously, uh, Tim Cruz is doing very well there. Uh, what it looks like is going to happen here is, uh, and this is what, if you're Tim Cruz, what you want, is you finish first, and then your total is higher than the other two guys combined. And that sets you up pretty good for November. Okay, Ed? Well, you know, if you look at the science of the election, as I like to say, is an incumbent always has a 65% chance of winning right off the bat, no matter what. But with, the, with uh, Mr. Lanus and uh, Mr. Lawton, I, I didn't see anything that would pull votes away from Tim Cruz. I, I didn't see any dynamic. I saw three people who were very similar. I'm not saying that's bad. We, you had a businessman from Brock and a businessman from uh, Boston, and Tim Cruz has done so much for his ward and the city. So I, I didn't, I, I'm not surprised at that because there was really nothing, and I don't, I, I'm, I'm going to rephrase that, I don't want to say nothing. There was, there's really, I didn't see anything that would attract Cruz vo uh, voters to go to another direction. Right. Um, just waiting for 1C, and I'm just doing a little bit of math while I'm sitting here. Um, number, number two spot right now is um, I, Steve, Lanus. Steve Lanus is number two. So at the, far. It's so far, but 1C is going to come in. You know, you never know what the numbers. I mean, you know, one, one, one uh, precinct could, could knock it all out. But, yeah, I mean, Steve Lanus, uh, you know. We'll be pleased that he, uh, if he, if he, you know, succeeds, he'll be moving to that number two spot, and we'll go to round two, as they say. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, video for Ward Five. We're going to take a look at what we have for Ward Five. That is the other contested uh, city councilor race in the preliminary election. There are three candidates running in Ward Five: um, Jerry Smith, 
S Cindy Ethiakoska and Jeff Thompson. So we're going to take a look at uh, when I went over to uh, the east side of Brockton and, uh, and, and talk to the three candidates for city council in Ward 5. Ward 5, Jarese Smith, a candidate for city council for Ward 5. Jarese, how's your day been today and uh, what are you thinking? Uh, my day's been full. <laughs> I've been running, uh, meeting people. Uh, so many culturally diverse people out and engaged in civic education, civic activity today. It's amazing. It's wonderful to see, and I'm glad the day is here. Now, Therese, you're a civic activist. You've been involved for years in the Democratic Party and all sorts of things in Brockton. What do you have to bring to the table for the city council race for Ward 5? Well, um, as a professional educator, and um, I work as a civil rights and special education compliance monitor now for the last eight years, and working along with a political party here in Brockton, I have been, I have had the experience of working with people on various issues. Um, I like grassroots. I like knocking on doors. I like talking to people. I like hearing their views. and. Running for this position, it will give me the opportunity to speak for those people who are giving me enough of their time in their space, in their concerns, to raise and uplift their voices. Jeff Thompson, candidate for Ward 5 City Council. Uh, it's it's uh, afternoon on preliminary election day. How do you feel going into the election? I feel great. Um, I've been here since 7 in the morning. I think the reception uh, from people... Uh, going into the polling station has been good. Um, it looks like uh, I, I don't know what the count is now, but it's been a steady flow. Um, I'm excited. I did a lot of work to get to this, sp uh, this spot. Um, it's been a fantastic experience, and I can't wait for the payout. What do you have to offer the Voters Award 5 uh, running for city council? Experience. I think uh, being an attorney, uh, being a member of the uh, zoning board, uh, I think that has uh, helped me develop a skill set that I think is uh, readily transferable to the city council. Um, so yeah, experience and, and, and desire. Um, this is a job I really want because I want to serve my community and uh, you know that's why I'm running. Okay, and we also have the 1C numbers. Um, DJ Lawton is 79, Tim Cruz is 185, and Steve I'm always going to mess it up now. Lanes is 56. Okay, so I... I Lanus. Lanus. Little, little Lanus, you know, okay. Greek, Lanus. There you go. You gotta, okay. You know, you well, I just bit, met yeah. him today. Very today good Today for the first Very time. Nice Seems like a really nice guy. Um, and we have the overall results in Ward 1. Ward 1, Tim Cruz, 1189. Steve Lanus. Lanus, yeah. Is 461. And okay. Mark Lawton Daniel is... Daniel Lawton. You're right. Sorry. Thank you, Daniel. I, I keep think calling I him DJ. Patrick you said Patrick. Patrick. I think I okay. Patrick. So we're going to say so we're even. Daniel. We're okay, even. we're even. We're even. So Daniel, I call him right. Daniel Lawton, 401. And the, the results between two and three was 60 votes off. So it does prove that every single vote counts. 2,051 voters in Ward 1 cast ballots for one of the three candidates. Yeah, I so think, I think Tim has a, a, had a good night, a very good yep. night. I mean, you add the two numbers together, it's 862 votes. Yeah, so those votes are going to go to one or the other. And, uh, and some of those votes will go to Timmy. Some and will go to they're Tim. They're not all going to go for, you know. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I have some mayor's race numbers, but I haven't had really a chance to yeah. take a look at them. So re reaction, any more reaction about Ward 1? Uh, went pretty much as we might have thought it would. Uh, uh, well, you'll have until November to get the guy's name right. I think, I think Ed hit it on the head, though. There wasn't anything you're jumping out to say That's true. why I need to unseat, you know, mm -hmm. Tim. He, you know, he, he's, he's been very good for Ward 1. Right. Yeah, so. okay. and, and I, I felt that all three candidates were very similar also. So, mm. so the numbers as total in Ward 1 are Tim Cruz, 1,189 votes. Um, Steve Lanus is 461 votes. And Daniel Lawton is 401 votes for a total of 2,051 votes in the race in Ward 1. Okay, I'm getting a whole bunch of uh, pictures sent to me of, I don't know which ward it is, um, but I'm going to take a look at that. I'd like to take a look at another video while I'm doing that. We got one, 
we got five, and I, we have uh, candidates for counselor at large. So I like to run that tape if we could, that recording if we could, because it's I think it's the longest one. I think we have about five or six candidates that we caught up with. So let's take a look at the counselor at large. Rita, running for counselor at large, first time candidate. Um, tell us about your experience and why people should vote for you. Yes, thank you so much for that question. It has been great throughout this process since when we, my family, decided that I would be running for council at large. I was really committed to this. And now this is the day, huh? It's finally here. It seems like a long road, but I'm very committed to the city and I've shown myself, I believe, because I've been knocked to as many doors as I could. I've really worked very hard, so I will hope people will recognize that because I gave out my best. And I'm at peace in my heart, so whatever happens, I will gladly accept it, but I'm hoping for a positive result. I'm very hopeful. So we're at September 17th, the preliminary election day. It goes from 15 candidates down to eight. Um, do you think you're going to be one of the eight? What do you think? <laughs> What's your feeling? I'm just curious. Yes, I like to hope so. I have a lot of people telling me they're voting for me, and I've been getting very positive feedback. So I'm hoping that in the end it will result in positive results. I'm very hopeful that I'll be uh, one of the final eight, and I am looking forward. Can't wait for 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, whenever the results are out. But, yes, very happy. Thank you. Kevin, um, a clear vision, a strong voice. Why would you pick that slogan? Well, I just feel like, you know, to have a clear vision, I have a clear vision for the city of Brockton, and I have a strong voice. I will stand up for the citizens of Brockton in every way possible. Over the weekend, I really ramped things up with my campaign. I'm out here knocking on doors, getting a very great reception. Uh, coming down the stretch, I really believe that I will do well. I'm confident that I'll be able to pull this out tonight. I'm hoping the voters come out and vote. Uh, I've been seeing you know, a lot of uh, flow of traffic here at the Hancock School, and I am hoping that we um, get a great turnout. It said, they said uh, at 2 o'clock this afternoon it was about 11%, so that will bode well. It might go over 20% of a voter turnout. Sounds good to me. So onward to November, what do you think? I think that uh, going on to November, I think it's going to be um, exciting for all parties. I personally am going to be out there working. I'm going to continue to try to reach the voters and let them know about myself. I'm going to run on going out there to make a difference here in the city of Brockton. I already do, and uh, it's nice to see new faces on the ballot. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. Tina Cardoso running for counselor at large, uh, 15 candidates. Yes. What's your feeling today? You've been out and about. It's preliminary election day. I'm feeling good. It's nice out here. It seems there's a lot of folks going in and out of the voting, uh, the polls, so that's great. I'm feeling really good. Now, this time you ran citywide. You ran Ward 3 before. What's different about this election, and what do you have to offer the voters of Brockton? Well, what's different is the sun is out this time, so that's great. Yeah. Uh, and like I said, I'm, I've always said this, all I can do is be your voice. I'm here for you, I'm here for the people to serve the people, and I've been doing that for two years, and I want to continue to do that in this capacity. Wish you luck. I don't know where you're going to be tonight. You're invited down at the studio if you have a minute. Thank you so much, Mark. Thanks Thank you. you. Okay, Larry Curtis, we're here at Court in North Main Street, right next to BCA headquarters. One of the things you talked about during the campaign is uh, cleaning up this area. Well, cleaning up the area, I mean, when you have a uh, city that has just basically put $150 million of new investment into our downtown area, one of the blights that we always see as a resident here or anyone who comes to visit our city is unfortunately the homeless population that gathers around Perkins Park as they gather either to go into Father Bill's Mainspring or they get released early in the morning. I said, the reality is, is that's a site that if we're really going to attract investors to come into our city, that we need to relocate. Father Bill's Main Spring and you know reinvigorate the parents of our gateway cities, gateway interests to our city. Court in May, North Main Street is a major gateway into our downtown area. We need to clean it up. We've talked about it for years and years. It's time to do something about it and stop the talking and let's get something done. And as a counselor at large, you would be in the position to do that because you're a citywide uh, elected official and um, 11 members of the city council. Four of them are at large, so obviously uh, you are your Ward 6 resident, but it is a citywide issue. It is definitely a citywide issue. Uh, the perception of this city 
uh, unfortunately, for too long has been crime, drug infested, and it's really not. I mean, when you really look at the city of Brockton, I relocated here 20 years ago because as a Roxbury, Dorchester guy born and raised, second those 11 children, I'm a city boy. I love what the city of Brockton had to offer, and I enjoyed it for the last 20 years, and I want to stay here for the remaining 20 years of my life and make sure that we can do something to leave our children and my grandchildren now something to be able to be proud of going forward. Absolutely. Now, Larry, you were a uh, behind-the-scenes guy, uh, the treasurer for the late mayor, Bill Carpenter. Did, uh, did his passing get you into the race? I know you've run before, but did that uh, recommit you to what you want to do as a counselor? I would have to say yes, most definitely. I think that, you know, I ran in 2009 for counselor at large. At that time, there were still 15 candidates. I made the top eight, but didn't make the top four at that time. For the last 10 years, I've been behind the scenes working the campaign with Michael Brady when he was running for state representative. I worked the campaign for years for Brockton. I worked the campaign for the last six years with Mayor Bill Carpenter. And the excitement that the Carpenter legacy has generated in this city needs to continue to move forward. And w after the services of Mayor Carpenter at Brockton High School, uh, the following Monday, we saw the dominoes fall into place as to how the political landscape was going to happen. The council appointed Mayor Rodriguez as the mayor through the remainder of the Carpenter term. Uh, Councilor at large Bob Sullivan decided to run for the mayor at that point in time. That opened up a second at large seat because uh, Gene Derencourt's seat was already open when he decided to run. So, having two at large seats open, and having worked for 10 years behind the scenes in campaigns that were very, very important to the city of Rockton, I felt that I had a lot to offer this city. Um, common sense leadership is really making a better Brockton through common sense leadership. A lot of people talk about experience, uh, inexperience. I don't care what you want to say. You have to have a passion and a commitment for what you believe in. I believe that I have something to offer the residents here in the city of Brockton, and that's why I chose to step forward to uh, be able to hopefully become one of the next four councils at large. Adius, number one on the ballot today. Do you think you're going to be number one in the council at large race? Uh, I believe I'm already number one because God created me special. So everything that I'm doing, is, I'm always be number one. Okay, so um, running for council at large, that's a city-wide race. What are your issues, and uh, do you feel confident that you're going to go on to November? Uh, well, it's, like I say to everybody, everywhere that I go, it's not about me, it's not about the city. I've been living in the city for the past 25 years. I want to see the city moving forward. I want to see the city attract more business. I want to see the city get more program for school. I want to see the city add lower taxes for the taxpayer. That's what I'm fighting for. So when I get elected, there's no if. When I get elected, I will always fight for my people because this is my home and I'm here to say. Now, your slogan, I, I love it, the change we need, the voice to, to, we deserve. Why'd you pick that? Well, I, I realize we all cannot go to City Hall, but you need somebody to advocate on your behalf. And if you need change, I'm your change. If you need a voice, I'm, 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 I'm a voice for the voiceless people. So I believe I'm, I'm going to be a voice for everybody in the city of Brockton. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much, Mark, and see you at 9 o'clock at Gino's restaurant. It's going to be a celebration. I'm going to tell everybody, please come out after work, come to vote, because your vote counts. If you don't vote, you don't count. Exactly, and if you don't vote, don't complain. That right? is exactly. If you don't uh, uh, plant the seed, don't expect to see any recall. That's how I see it. Okay, Gary Keith uh, running for uh, city councilor at large. Um, is fourth time a charm? Fourth time is a charm. So far, it seems good. Okay. Seems uh, good. What's been your day like today? What are you, what, um, what are you hearing? You getting some positive response? I actually am. You know, I'm feeling really good about it. You know, um, when I wrote it this morning about 10 after 7, uh, there was about 10 people coming out. I mean, and all of them basically said, Gary, I mean, they recognized me. Mm -hmm. And they said, Gary, we just voted for you. I, you know, um, a lot of people know what my face is and, and I guess what I've been doing. Um, I don't necessarily recognize them, but I mean, so it's, that's a great thing. That's a good thing, that's a good knowing thing. that I'm touching somebody. Okay, now, uh, your slogan, Experience Matters, seems to have been borrowed by a couple of other <laughs> candidates. So tell us why you use that slogan, because I know you've changed it over the years, but yes. why is that so important to you? Well, because of the fact that it shows that I have been working. 
You know, um, I've been gaining experience every single day, helping the citizens of Brockton, listening to what their complaints are, what they're, uh, you know, what they're trying to accomplish or whatever in the city, and being able to, uh, to basically have someone reach out to you personally to help them and stuff, right? I'm gaining experiences while I'm helping them. So a lot of times, um, basically, so that means a lot to me, you know, uh, and that's where the experience matters comes at. I mean, it was the four years on the planning board and the four years on the zoning board to see exactly, to be a part of our government, to see how it works. Um, but then being able to actually assist, you know, in doing it and helping people, you know, with, especially when the end results are, when you see a smile on their face and they accomplished uh, what, they, what they do, uh, what they get, what they're after, whatever it might be. Um, it all feels good, man. It makes you feel really good and appreciate it. So onward to November? I believe so. I believe so. I think this might be the year here, but you know something, as I always say, Mark, if it's not, it doesn't mean that tomorrow morning I will still get up tomorrow morning and serve Brockton, you know? Absolutely. I think that uh, if you stop serving just because you lose the election, then you were running for the wrong reasons in the first place. One of my really good friends said to me always is other ways to serve. So I've learned that over the course of my lifetime. Won a few, lost a few, but you're always there to serve. Thanks, Gary. Thank Appreciate you, it. Good Thank luck. You. That's a nice sign. And we're back here. Uh, that was a good video by Mark Lindy and crew. Thank you very much for that. We got the uh, at large race. Uh, 15 candidates going to be whittled down to eight positions uh, after tonight. Uh, you, put, you, you go in, you vote for four, so it's a little confusing, but uh, I'm going to ask my colleague here, Ed Miller, to sort a little bit out for us. Ed? Well, one of the things that I did, as you know, I do Stand Up Strong with um, uh, every Sunday on 1530 a.m. And the thing is, I found it very strange. Like I say, I look at things sideways. And usually when you're in an economically good time, which we are, you tend to have less people run than if people are struggling more. So I, I asked, the, especially the new people who are running at large and, and mayor, why did they get in the race? And, and pretty much they all said in one way or another it's the stagnation on the board, the stagnation in the administration. And that's why a lot of people are getting, are getting involved because some of them feel that we have two memories, as I call it, I remember winners. I remember when it was back in the uh, 50s. I remember my, you know, and a lot of people, Brockton has changed. We are not people who worked in the, uh, the mills anymore and the shoe factories. We're a, a conglomerate. We're diversified uh, people, and I think people are starting to see that, and people, aren't, people are seeing the same people getting the help, and not the others. And I think that's, that's going to be a, a thing that we're going to be seeing for a while. Now, Ed, you see a lot of the, uh, a lot of the newcomers uh, drew the uh, ballot positions at the top of the ballot. Mm -hmm. Do you think that will have an effect? Because, I mean, your incumbent counselors, Ann Beauregard, who's the incumbent Ward 5 counselor, although she's running for counselor at large this time, drew number 15. That's kind of going to be a long haul for her to get from 15 to 8. You know, some people believe that where you are on the ballot is a help. I don't think it's that strong of a help. I mean, it, it, being at the top is better than being at the bottom. But when people go in, I think they're going to know who they're going to vote for. And I think some will vote on the names. I think uh, Gary Keith will get a lot of votes because people know him. I think uh, people are going to vote for new names because they also feel uh, abandoned and left out. But I, I've never been one who believed the ballot position helps all that much. Okay, so uh, I'm the opposite thought on that, so uh, there you go. It's not probably not the only thing we're the opposite side, right, right. but, uh, but uh, some of the new candidates did uh, get a uh, high ballot position, Addie S. Pierre being one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, we heard from Rita Mendez uh, earlier. Uh, she drew the number two ballot position, which might be a big help. Ray Hennington, who uh, has uh, run before, he was uh, at one point a uh, school committee member, uh, put a lot of money into the campaign, this one and the and, previous And he was ones. running for a while, yes. And uh, he drew four spots. So what do you think about his chances, Ed? Uh, you know, one of the things I've noticed in Brockton, it's, it's hard to get your message out, um, especially that we lost the radio station years ago. 
Um, we, d we don't really have a show. I mean, I think my show, one hour a week, is uh, pretty much all Brockton has. And I think that hurts the candidates more than others. Um, you know, I think Ray has a shot because he's known. But, you know, when, when you're talking about 15 people, it's like 15 people singing a different song, and you don't really hear everything that they're talking about. How about a guy like Larry Curtis? Now, he drew the, I, I believe, the seventh career. spot. Um, Bill Carpenter's uh, ca campaign treasurer. Yeah, Larry's career. run a few times before. People you know, know him Brown, from around town. Uh, He's done. So how do you see his chances? Larry, with his work, in, uh, in the uh, opioid crisis and doing the show A Deadly Science. I think that's his strongest uh, aspect because we are, have been looking at that issue for the last five, ten years. And, and he's been in the forefront working diligently to help our community on this issue. And I think that's a, a strength for him. And I think he, he and his wife worked with him on that. And I think that's going to be more of a strength uh, than his being a, the treasurer of Bill Carpenter, uh, though Bill Carpenter was very popular. Of course, he kept on winning. So that will help. But I, I, I think his activism in the opioid crisis is the one that's going to help him. And then a real interesting situation. You have Moses Rodriguez, the current mayor, but not running for mayor and running for his old seat at Council at Large, but he's down near the bottom of the ballot. Uh, do you think that would confuse voters possibly and uh, he might have a little bit of trouble? I think Moses will probably be one of the top vote-getters. I don't think being at the bottom, I think people know the name. Moses is always out there. He's always accessible, always with a smile, always wanting to help. I don't think uh, people aren't going to find his name on the ballot. And I think he's going to be, if not the top vote getter, somewhere in the top three. And Win Fowell as well, down near the bottom of the ballot. Uh, any problems for him? Uh, well, Win is Win. Uh, he'll tell you uh, how he sees it. I, I definitely say he'll make the primary. And make the primary is all you want to do, and he'll get out there. And, uh, you know, if he has the hunger to run again, He'll be out there, and as I say, incumbents always have that 60, 65 percent chance. So, uh, looking at that whole field, why don't you give me uh, give me your surprise, your surprise in a race? What do you think is going to be the big surprise out of this council at large race? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I never like to make the guesses like that because then I make myself look bad. <laughs> but I think uh, Rita Mendez is going to do very well. I think Gary Keith, because he's been out there, will do well. Um, people have talked about Tina Cardozo. I, I, my guess is she'll be in the top eight, and hopefully I will look like I know what I'm talking about, and that will happen. Uh, but I, I, think, I think those will be. I, I, I think you'll be seeing a lot of new people. Well, that's a, that's a pretty good rundown of the Council Lodge race. Uh, do we have video now of the mayor's candidates? If we do, let's run that. Uh, we'll shift over to the mayor's race and uh, run the video of the mayoral candidates this morning at the polling places. So we think it's Sully Pereira. Place already this morning. Yeah. How are you Long. feeling, and what what do you think's going on today uh, in the city of champions? Well, uh, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling I'm feeling awesome, man. So I took my dad uh, to vote this morning, and my mom and myself I went to vote, and I think that. You know, it's a very uh, exciting moment for the city. Time for change, time for change. And I think uh, the people are willing and ready, you know, to show that we are the city of champion and we are ready to, to move to the next levels. And thank you, thank you to BCA for covering this. You know, I love BCA, so I couldn't thank possibly, you know, say anything without acknowledging the greatness of, of, of every single thing that BCA has been doing, not just in this election, but every election. But I think now is the moment for everybody in the city to see exactly who we are as people and what we stand for and where we want to go. And as somebody who's wanting for mayor, you know what they do in Oakland, I think that the people of Brockton are feeling good, feeling good. Now, um, what are you hearing about numbers and turnout today? Um, I haven't checked any of the numbers today. They come out at 10, 2, and 4. I haven't had a chance to talk to Cindy. What are you seeing? I've seen like a steady flow of people going in, even in the middle of the day. Yeah. 
I mean, I think that, you know, this selection is a, is a unique opportunity, and I think it is safe to say that in the history of the city of Brockton, you've never seen something like that. The people are organized, are mobilized, they are ready to move to the next level. But one thing that I gotta say about Brockton is that this is the moment to truly show everybody, especially outside of the city, that we are one city, we are one community. And with that being said, when they voted for me to be the next mayor, you know, pretty soon, we're gonna be very excited. But in terms of numbers, I think, you know, the outcome will be way bigger than most people expected, based on what I'm observing, based on what I'm hearing, and based on what I know in regard to past elections. So uh, with that being said, I think that, you know, the city of Brockton will look pretty good tonight. <laughs> Where are you going to be tonight for your headquarters? I mean, you know what it is, man. So it's Gino, going to be at Gino. Right? So okay. you know it. So, um, okay. you know, I'm invited everyone. Just come down and have some fun. So it's not my party. It's not your party. It is our party. So just come down, you know, you know, just be yourself, enjoy, and making sure that, you know, the person next to you, you know, feel comfortable. But with that being said, I think that, you know, at the end of the day, we are one family. At the end of the day, we are one city. At the end of the day, we are one community. So we have a solemn obligation, not just to act like we know what we're doing, but to work in collaboration with the people, not against them, to bring the best out of all of us and making sure that we invest more in education, more on public safety, more, youth and more on youth empowerment, more on seniors, especially trying to find a way to minimize the homeless situation and bring downtown Brockton back to life. And this is what you can expect on the MAD administration. Brockton will never be the same in a positive way. Karina, um How's this election going for you today? You've probably been out since 7 a.m. when the polls opened. Uh, what are you hearing? What are you thinking? Honestly, it's stressful. Um, don't have a lot of enough people on my team. So I'm just going places to places, see what I can get done. And honestly, I'm just hoping that everything turns out in my favor. I think you impressed a lot of people during the debate. Um, I think it takes a lot of guts for someone 23 years old to run for mayor. Um, what, do you, what do you hope to accomplish if you make it from September to November and then on from there? Um, honestly, I just want to um, do some positive changes in our community, um, improve Brockton, make it prosper, especially for the upcoming generation, better the quality of life so that people can actually be proud to say that they're from Brockton. As I go on until, no until November 5th, I just hope that I get more help. And honestly, I hope that I can, just starting today just I've, I've been starting already just doing what i can to help the city you know so i i hope that by getting more people behind me and then i'll have more people with me helping brockton get better bob sullivan election day preliminary election 2019 how are you feeling you must have been every place this morning voting uh shaking hands talking to people yeah mark it's been a great day weather wise it's spectacular it's beautiful but you know what's the most beautiful thing is, is people are engaged here in the City of Champions. Uh, the polls, it looks like people are really out there voting today, which is good for everybody in Brockton. My own uh, campaign has been a very positive campaign, very upbeat. I'm just, you know, humbled by all the support. And, uh, you know, I feel confident the way we've uh, campaigned. It's really been a great campaign. Now, we're at the Firefighters Union Hall, and I know you pulled out all the stops. You got all the union endorsements, from what I can tell. Yeah, you know, Local 144, the Brockton Firefighters, they've endorsed me for many, many years. Um, you know, and, and it's an honor and it's a privilege. And uh, again, the professional firefighters of Massachusetts endorsed me. Uh, the Iron Workers Local 7, the Plumbers Local 12, IBEW 2222. So, you know, at the end of the day, these organizations interview all the candidates, and I'm just honored that they decided I was the best candidate. And I believe experience matters and leadership matters. And I look forward to uh, continuing the campaign up until 8 o'clock when the polls close, Mark. Okay, so what are you hearing from the people out on the street, uh, going around, shaking hands, holding signs, calling people? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's how we do it. It's old-fashioned politics, right? The personal one-on-one, -on -one, we're using social media, we're using the phone, but it's, it's reaching out to people. That's what we've been doing for weeks now, uh, knocking on doors, getting the message out, and, you know, I'm hopeful. Uh, but again, at the end of the day, whoever wins, whoever loses, it's, it's good for Brockton uh, because it's creating some buzz and it's to better the community we call home. What do you have to offer that the other candidates don't? Well, you know, I think on day one, when you're elected mayor, you're the CEO, Mark, and you and I have talked about this. It's a business known as Brockton, $440 million, almost a half a billion dollar budget. You know, I'm the only candidate with a master's in business administration degree. I have a law degree. Uh, but quite honestly, it's 14 years as a counselor at large serving the whole city, seven wards, 28 precincts. And I think experience matters. There's no learning curve when you're the mayor. You have to hit the ground on day one, and I believe I have that. Do you think it's going to help coming from the city council to be the mayor of the city of Brockton? I know relationships in the past with different mayors and different councils have been somewhat frayed. 
Yeah, I mean, my view is this. Uh, if I'm honored to be elected mayor, uh, there's no barriers, right? It's a team effort. It's the school committee. It's the city council. It's the mayor or all local officials elected duly, right? The same way every two years. You need to come together as a collective, collaborative approach. That's what I would do. I, and also work with the state delegations, the, two sta the three state reps and the, and the one state senator. So um, I, I look forward to it. Um, but again, at the end of the day, the voters will decide. What do you want to tell the residents of Brockton right now uh, prior to the close of the polls? Well, first of all, thank you. Thank you for uh, caring about our community, going to the polls to vote. It's very, very important, not just for the president of Brockton, but for the future of Brockton. That's my slogan, leadership for Brockton's future. I think that means something. So, you know, being a husband, being a father of three wonderful kids in Brockton, but at the end of the day, Brockton is home. It's your home, my home, and our home, and I hope the uh, voters go out and, and honor me um, to make the top two to at least have a chance to go into November 5th. Jimmy, we're here 6 o'clock on election. Eve before the polls closed two hours. You've been out all day running for mayor, ran for mayor in 2017. How are you feeling? I feel calm and collected is what I always try to be. Um, but, uh, you know, as we get closer to 8 o'clock, get a little nervous, but, you know, that's what keeps us on our toes. Um, you know, in, in all, all honesty, a little bit somber because it's not the same as 2017. Uh, you know, of course, with the late Mayor Carpenter, may rest in peace. Uh, things a little bit different, but the energy is still there. The city is still looking to move forward. Uh, development is coming to the city of Brockton, so we need to make sure that people are getting out there, getting active, uh, and voting for change in the city of Brockton and also its trajectory. We want the city to move forward uh, in a progressive and uh, open-minded uh, pace uh, in a way that's also going to make sure that uh, we see progress in the city of Brockton for years to come, hopefully. So if we're talking about moving forward and uh, planning, what better person than the planner, right? That's been your message, right? <laughs> yes, it has. Yes, it has. My message, my experience, uh, and as we've been hearing, experience matters, but we want the right experience. So, uh, and that's what I hope to bring to the city of Brockton. Now, um, what are you hearing out in the field today? You've, you've knocked on yes. as many doors as you can knock on, yes. and you've campaigned all around the city. How, do, you, do you feel like you have the momentum? I do. I do feel so, but I like, you know, holding composure, and I don't like, you know, kind of showing off in any way, ego and mannerism, stuff like that. We like to make sure that we keep our nose to the grindstone. And something that I remember playing football is, uh, it's fourth quarter, is 0-0. Oh no. So make sure that you work hard uh, to the uh, last minute, last second, uh, until the ball, uh, the bell, the bell rings. So that's what we're working for. Now, the commercial I saw that you did had you in boxing gloves yes. and everything. It, this, is, this is a championship yes. fight. There are seven candidates for mayor. Right. Um, um, are you looking forward to the next round? I am. Fingers crossed and God willing, yes, I am. I always, uh, you know, give praise to my higher power and I always go out there and do the work that is needed to uh, hopefully get the uh, job done. And hopefully we've done that. But we'll know later on tonight. Welcome back. We're here um, at election night, preliminary election 2019. It's about 9, 14 p.m. And uh, we have some mayoral numbers um, I'm not sure if these are final numbers or not, but they're looking like they're final numbers. They were posted at Sullivan headquarters over Tin Rays earlier, and I have a screenshot of them. So I'm going to run down what I have. Uh, we're going to wait for the actual uh, printout um, for, the may for, for, for the mayor's race. But it is looking like at this point in time that uh, Robert Sullivan has 5,071 votes or 37.94% of the votes. Uh, number two is Jimmy Pereira, 3,319 votes for 24.83% of the votes. That's a 1,752 vote difference. Uh, third right now is John Bradley Duranicourt, 2,875 votes. Um, he would be at 21.51%. And number four spot is Mark Lawton, 1,858 votes for 13.90%. Uh, the three challengers behind them um, are uh, very um, short um, in terms of the numbers. Um, you know, uh, number five is uh, Karina Montpellas. Number six is Tony Branch, and number seven is Stephen Figueredo. I'm going to do those numbers again. Again, I am not sure their final numbers, so I'm not sure we're going to post them yet till we have them. But um, I will read them out again. Uh, Robert Sullivan, 5,071 votes. Number two, Jimmy Pereira, 3,319 votes. Number three, John Bradley Duranicourt, 
2,875 votes. Number four, Mark Lawton, 1,858 votes. So those are the top four candidates. The other challengers are um, uh, Karina Mompelis, 105 votes, Tony Branch, 89 votes, and Stephen Figueredo with 48 votes. The total number of votes cast in the mayor's race is 13,366 votes. So that looks like it is the, um, the numbers in the mayor's race. The counselor at large race is really, really hard to track right now because there are 15 candidates. We've gotten some screenshots from Ward 1, from Ward 2, and uh, it's, it's hard with 15 candidates to literally take those. They look like cash register tapes. And then when you put them on a cell phone and you blow them up, uh, unless you have 20-20 vision, good luck reading all the numbers. So we're waiting on a couple more uh, numbers, um, you know, to come in for the council at large race so we can uh, tell you who's the top eight candidates that are going to be running for council at large. So um, I'll start with Tom. Tom, hearing those numbers, one, two, three, four, ballot order, does that surprise you? It really doesn't surprise me. I mean, I, I, we all know that those were the, the big candidates, you know, those, those four. The question, you know, obviously would be how were they going to shake out? Um, you know, um, Bob Sullivan, like I said, number one vote getter for quite some time. Um, long time ties here in Brockton. Very good, um, you know, ground game, uh, able to, you know, raise a significant amount of money. However, you know, um, uh, Jimmy Pereira, who did not raise nearly as much, 18000 um, had a wonderful showing, you know, second, second place finish. Um, you know, money certainly helps. You know, Mark had the most money, but, um, you know, came in in the, in the fourth slot. Um, you know, Gene Bradley, Darren Court, uh, you know, certainly a good showing. I, I, again, I, I, I think that, you know, he needed just a little bit more time uh, to show, you know, what, uh, what he can do. Um, certainly has a great future ahead of him, but, um, you know, those were the big four, and uh, it's going to be interesting now to see, you know, round two, you know, where do all those votes go? You know, basically, you know, people are going to celebrate tonight, but the work begins tomorrow uh, because this is, uh, you know, this is going to be a, a tough race. Um, you know, Pereira has certainly run this race before, but Bob Sullivan certainly has covered the whole city before and, and it does very well, so it's going to be interesting. Um, you know, I think whoever works the hardest uh, will basically reap the reward in, in, in this case. If you ever think about uh, back in the past, uh, I'm going to date myself, a car commercial, Avis, number two, we try harder. The, the, the difference between the votes between uh, Robert Sullivan and um, Jimmy Pereira is 1,752 votes. If you go back to the primary, uh, preliminary election uh, with uh, former Mayor Balzotti and Bill Carpenter, it was a pretty good, it wasn't that much of a spread, but it was close to a thousand votes and it turned around in the final election for, with 55 votes. The spread between Jimmy Pereira and Gene Bradley to run in court, 444 votes. But if you add the third and the fourth place together, that's 4743 votes up for grabs. That's right. Okay, exactly. and, and, and I have a feeling exactly. that some of them will go one way, some of them will go the other way, um, and you know, uh, whoever is in third place, everybody's calling that person right now saying, I want you to back me. Well, Thirty and fourth. I mean, you know, right. Mark, you know, I, I certainly wouldn't uh, turn my nose at up at, you know, 1,800, almost 2,000 votes. You Absolutely know? not. I mean, yeah, I got yeah. those two added yeah. together. So. Gentlemen. Well, I thought that uh, Mark Lawton would do a lot better, but uh, maybe the fact that he just moved back into Brockton to run for this race, that might have turned some people off. Uh, I, uh, Tom alluded to it earlier that uh, as far as Gene Bradley was concerned, maybe he should have stayed another term as a city councilor. He got some more experience, some more, uh, get his name out there a little more. Pereira, obviously, the, the good showing last time around, and uh, now he's looks like he's going to be in a final. But here's the key to the final, as far as I can see it. If I, and I read all their literature. Sullivan and Pereira seem to be almost similar in their what they want to do, their views, and all this other stuff. 
What's going to separate those two? What, what issue will separate those two candidates, and will it be the sanctuary city? Now, you know, we know Pereira wants it. Sullivan says he voted against it, but he won't come out and say, flat out say he's against it. Well, so that, right. that issue there might have a big bearing on the final. I'm going to disagree with you slightly. I interviewed both of them, and Bob Sullivan was very crystal clear that he was against it. He voted against it in ordinance, and he voted against it in council, and he's been trying to correct the record because he believes that his record was distorted. I'm not speaking for him, but from what he told me when I interviewed him in the studio last Friday is, and I was there, I was at both meetings, and I watched him as the chair of ordinance committee talk about that, the whole situation, the way it was worded, it wasn't done legally correct, he voted against it for that reason, and then when he went to the council, he was, I'm, I'm not sure if he was chair or not, but he spoke pretty vocally about well, it. Well, here's two things that concern me as far as that goes. When the council votes, they do a roll call vote alphabetically, which Sullivan gets the last vote. So he can pretty much see how the thing's going down before he casts his vote. That's one thing. The other thing that's really concerning is one of his number one campaign supporters is Representative Michelle Dubois who was on national TV last year promoting the sanctuary city and the uh, uh, tipping off illegal aliens as far as a potential ice raid, which never happened. So if she is backing him that fully, I can't picture that she would back a, a non-sanctuary city candidate that fully. Just my opinion, but that's out there. Ed, I can well, tell that you want to jump in on that one. One of my favorite sayings is uh, from former Mayor Koch, may he rest in peace in New York. If you agree with me, 9 out of 12 times, vote for me. If you agree with me, 12 out of 12 times, go have your head examined. I'm not defending Michelle, and I have my own thoughts, and it's not sanctuary city, but we can't break federal, federal law. People are calling it sanctuary city to get the fear out and get people, oh my God, this is going to happen. No, it had nothing to do with that. It's just complete bull when you hear it. But the thing is, what do you do when someone ha is in a domestic violence and they may not be here, they may not be here legally? You're saying, sorry, good luck? No, but that's beside the point. Um, again, I, I, I'm not going to knock Michelle for backing uh, Sullivan because they might agree on 95% of the things. That's, that's what it is. I'm not surprised with the numbers because as I brought up before, I didn't, I didn't ask, you know, who's supporting me, I asked them, where did the money come from? And it's funny that the people who raised more money outside the city came in third and fourth, and the more people who raised more money inside the city, which are people who are going to vote for you, did, came in first and second. And I go, that, to me, that's not a surprise. Um, I, as I was talking to uh, Tom earlier when we were off the air, Mark Lawton, I love Mark Lawton. If, if I ever wanted to run again, I'm going to go to Mark Lawton and try to get him to back me because he's a king maker. But can you become the king? And that's the question. Some people are great in the background. They'll do, make sure you do everything correct. But when it comes to running, and, you know, Mark has been, you know, since he's retired as a judge and hasn't run in 25, 30 years, Times have changed. He's, I, I, he's a great kingmaker. I'll always give him that. But sometimes standing up in front, of the, uh, in front of the audience and making the speech is a whole lot different. And don't get me wrong. I, you know, I've met Jimmy Pereira. I know Bob Sullivan. They're both very nice guys. And I'm sure they're, they, they're running for the right reasons. Uh, and as far as Michelle Dubois is concerned, I don't have a problem with Michelle Dubois. It's just that you know, she and I don't see eye to eye politically a lot of, on a lot of things. But... That's here or there. If she could, you know, she could think the way she wants to think. But uh, between Sullivan and Pereira, they they've got to do something to differentiate themselves from each other, because it's just too much of one thing, as far as I see it. You know, so I think I, I just want to make one more comment. Mm -hmm. I, I, interviewing everybody, uh, I, I interviewed most of the mayors, almost all of the people running for the um, council. I've never heard and and. For doing the show three years and six months when we had our own radio station, I've never had anybody come against education and be against public service. And those are the two top issues. And also bringing business into Brockton. 
you know, those are the three toughest issues. How do you separate? Because both of those two, Sullivan and Priera, are both for those three items. I think anybody running would be for those things. Right. But, 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 but how are they going to accomplish that? That's what we need to know. Right. What's going to be separate? We saw it when we read everybody's literature, we ran a council. I, I don't have to bring up, I can bring one person's literature and would be able to talk about all 15 of them because exactly. the literature is all it's the true. same. I, I think the devil is in the details, to be honest with you. Um, yes, you said everyone is for education. Yes, everyone's for education. But you need to really know the ins and outs of how the budget works. You have to know how you know the money flows from the state. You have to know about what federal monies are available. You have to know who the players are up on Beacon Hill, who you have to deal with, who you have to call um, at uh, DESE, who you have to call um, you know, up at the state house uh, in the governor's office. The connections, the relationships, the uh, ins and outs, the knowledge, those are the things that help a community. Um, you know, like the Kennedy dynasty, how were, they so how were they so successful? Because they had all the ties and all the connections. They brought the bacon home. Bottom line. Definitely you right. may not have loved their politics on every front, but they took care of their state. They took care of their community. And that's basically what I, th I see here in terms of Brockton. You know, mm -hmm. all the other issues you guys are talking about, yeah, they're important, but I think that what people care about in this community is they want a safe place for their family. They want good schools. They've seen um, you know, the uh, hardship of what's gone on here in the Brockton Public Schools for the last six years with all the layoffs. This is the first year that we have not had layoffs. And that didn't just come about because it just came about. It came about because we've, they, Beacon Hill knows we are prepared to pull the trigger on an equity and education lawsuit. Mm -hmm. Mayor Carpenter was a huge advocate uh, for that. The next mayor has to, the, has to really educate themselves prior to taking office right. so that they can talk the talk and walk the walk and know what the hell they're talking about on the campaign trail so that people have confidence that this person is going to pull into that leadership position and be a player. And that's what it's going to take. I think people are going to have to really have confidence in the person that's going to be in that office. So you can be a great guy, a good guy, you know, nice guy, but I think you really have to, to be successful and win in this election. You have to show the citizens of Brockton that you are well prepared, that you are very knowledgeable, that you are very confident, that you know the issues, you know the money issues, you know the budget, you know the public safety end is, is so important, you know, police, fire, but right now in this community, parents care about schools. Mm -hmm. Charter schools are huge. Um, knowing how those budgets are affecting this community, you have to educate yourself on that. Bill knew that. Um, and in order for the next person to be, win, I think they're going to have to prove to the citizens of Rockton that they know what the heck they're, they're doing and they have a plan and that, that they're not just, yeah, I'm for this. Okay, you're for this. Tell us, you know, how you're going to get what we need for this community. Well, let's, let's, not, let's not forget as well, uh, as Bob Sullivan has told us before in his, in his other campaigns, you know, in Brockton, we have a strong council, weak mayor form of government. So the mayor's thoughts aren't exactly, I mean, of course, the mayor leads the way, but the mayor does not make all the policy. The council does. The council has to approve what he wants to do. Even though he will write the budget, they still have to approve the entire budget. So now that we're through this preliminary process and you have the final two guys, you can have the one-on-one -on -one stuff where they can differentiate themselves between each other and hopefully we'll have some debates. Hopefully they'll be here on BCA and uh, we can see exactly how they match up against one another. And you know, it doesn't have to be a consensuous process, I, but, I, it, I, but, well, but, they, but they, we, they have to separate themselves. I, I agree with you to some extent, but the reason why Brockton this time around has gotten more money in this budget, and again, it's not where we need to be, but it's better, is because Bill has and had connections up on Beacon Hill, a very good relationship with Karen Polito, a very good relationship with the Baker administration, but really had the ear of Karen Polito, could call her up at any time mm -hmm. and basically talk any type of an issue. And that Superintendent Smith 
um, had a huge um, following with regard to urban superintendents in this state. She, um, you know, was basically uh, drafted up to Salem to take that position when they knew she was retiring from this one. That's how, uh, you know, much she was wanted and desired, but yet she is still a player with us because she has committed herself to Brockton and she is going to be basically our, continue to be our mouthpiece on the equity and education um, situation. You know, we, we fortunately we do have a very good and united school committee who get along with each other and basically support, you know, this administration both on the mayor's end and, as, and on the uh, administration of the school department and that we've been working together lobbying and putting this uh, action basically in, in, in play. So it's going to be interesting within the next three months to see uh, where we end up uh, when we see what they do on Beacon Hill with regard to the funding of education. But, but my point is, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, 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 it's a weak mayor, strong council. But, but hardly anyone up on Beacon Hill knows who the hell's on our council. Mm -hmm. Not really. It's, but they know who the mayor of Brockton was. You, you know, you, you saw the, uh, you know, you saw the ceremony for our mayor and how well respected he was and, and all the big names came down here. Um, so, so, yeah, strong council, weak mayor, but the mayor has a special position in terms of managing and directing. And I think that this is the time where whoever is mayor, you know, works well with the council because the council has, certainly has its role and is valued in this community and, and certainly supports all of us, especially the schools, when they can. But, but you really need that, um, you, you need that conductor, you need that Tom Brady, you need that quarterback, and, and, and the mayor in our community is the position that, that drives the, the, the force forward. I, I think what you're going to see, there's a couple of points I want to bring up. I think one of the things you're going to see is whichever one of those two win, you're not going to see the contentiousness that you saw with some of the counselors and the mayor where their feet were dug so, in, so far in that they really weren't willing to work with each other. And I think that brought in with the stagnation I was talking about. I think we're going to see a change. I think either Sullivan and Pereira are going to be able to work uh, together. As we know, when we're running against and you have whoever's running for this, you know, the gloves are out, the knives are out, everything's out. But once that election's over, you have to be able to put that behind you and be able to work with anybody. And I think both of those can do that. Yeah, the, that brings the, up the, a good the, point. The other, just one quick point and then. Sure. The other thing is one of the reasons why we did better uh, with education is because the way Chapter 70 spending was, uh, was being allocated changed. I mean, not just Brockton was being hurt by the, uh, the way it was, the way Baker set it up. It was because, it was, it was because, um, now I lost my train of thought. We were Sorry. hurt the most in the, in the entire time. Yeah, we were hurt, but no, the bridge was hurt the most. The Bridgewaters were hurt. The Not Cantons like were the, hurt. The oh, we were hurt the most. six years, they didn't lay off teachers like if, we if did. You, Every year we laid off oh. many teachers. So right. we, Let's go back none of, to no one got I hit like got us. Some video we, have, we have some video from the field. We want to take a look at uh, Jimmy Pereira's statements. Nubi Rateau went over to Pereira headquarters, and let's see what uh, Jimmy had to say. We're here with Jimmy Pereira. Jimmy, uh, first and foremost, congratulations, man. Hell of a victory. How are you feeling right now? Sorry, I'm in shock. Um, <laughs> I'm feeling excited. I'm feeling energized. I'm very proud of the city of Brockton, the voter turnout. Congratulations to all of the candidates. Everyone put a great effort into their campaigns. Uh, and this is what, you know, this is what I love to see. Uh, as far as a public servant, as far as a Brocktonian, as far as someone that wants to be engaged in local government, local politics, and just local uh, community initiatives as well. Uh, and it's just something that, you know, I'm at a loss for words, to be honest with you. Jimmy, I, I felt like you had a quiet, humble confidence going into this race. You know, um, let's talk about your team. Yes. And, you know, you were knocking on doors. Yes. This was a hard-fought race. Yes. And it's not over yet, it's you know. Not. The it's battle's won, but there's a war still going on. Yes. Let's talk about the team and, and the perseverance of going through um, and, yes. and finishing top two. Congratulations. I mean, that must be an Thank awesome you. feeling. It, it is. I appreciate that. And we know that it's 
it's a marathon, not a sprint. You have to put all your efforts in, and you have to be humble. Um, you know, and that's how I always carry myself. I think that's the Brockton spirit. Um, you know, when I've read about Rocky Marciano and uh, how he carried himself as well too, and that's something that I always wanted to be. Uh, you know, someone I always looked up to as well too. And I'm a fighter, but you know, you have to walk with class. You have to be genuine, uh, and you have to be honest and authentic too. And I think that's what Brockton wants, and that's what Brockton deserves. Uh, my team. What can I say about my team, man? They are hard workers. Kevin Higgins, my campaign manager, uh, he has experience, you know, whether it be his own campaign uh, on Whitman or being involved here in local the city of Brockton. And actually now he's moving to the city of Brockton. You know, so that's what we want to do. We want to make sure that we're not having a brain drain, but that we're bringing people to the city of Brockton. They're going to invest. They're going to empower the city uh, and going to make sure that they uh, get involved as well. Because, again, that's what we want here in the city of Brockton. One last thing, what message do you want to say to the viewers? November's coming. It's right around the corner. Yes. Right around the corner. So go you know, yes. back to work tomorrow. You're probably going to take a day off tomorrow, yeah. then back to work the next day. No but, days off. But, no but days what off. message do you want to give to, uh, to, to your supporters going yes. to November? To my supporters, thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Know that, again, it's a marathon. We must continue the fight. Uh, we got till November, so everybody registered to vote. Uh, we've seen a lot of uh, different is issues and situations at the polls, so we will be addressing them. Uh, and again, we need everybody to get involved because this is our opportunity uh, to bring the city of Brockton together, to move forward together, and to, again, make progress and uh, make sure that there's prosperity here in the city of Brockton. Hey, so. enough talking. He wants, to, he wants to celebrate. Yes. He wants to celebrate. Back to you guys in the studio. Thank you very much, Newbie, and congratulations to uh, Jimmy Pereira for coming in second. Second, I was staying before, before I went off looking for numbers, is uh, we try harder. We try to overcome and turn things around in the general election. Um, there are so many votes up for grab. This is 20 to 20 to 25 percent. Usually the November election, the turnout is higher. Plus, there are other council races in other wards, and there are school committee races, so that usually draws out more voters. We are going to have video from Sullivan headquarters shortly. Matt Nelson went over there, and we're going to take a look at that. Um, um, Tom, um, what do you think, and what you just heard from Jimmy Pereira? That's what you were talking about yeah, earlier in the he, night. He basically said, you know, it's a marathon, and, ba and he's absolutely right. The race starts tomorrow from scratch, day one. Um, you basically um, have to act as though you got no votes and that you are basically going to, you know, work for every single vote you need to be the winner. You have to um, you know, improve your organization. You need to make now connections with the other candidates and um, strengthen, you know, your team and, um, and outwork you know, the other side. And Bob Sullivan certainly knows that. He, uh, you know, he's known how to do that. He's done very well throughout the city the whole his whole political career. He was an underdog. I mean, I think that, uh, you know, when he first was running for that seat, you know, no one thought he would um, uh, beat, I believe, an Asiaf, and uh, that was a huge name in Brockton, but yet he did it. Um, and, and he knows that, uh, you know, the race starts tomorrow as well. So it's going to be very interesting. Uh, you're going to have two people that, uh, you know, have experience. Uh, Bob certainly, I would say, has more experience. But uh, Jimmy Pereira is no stranger to Brockton politics, and um, and the city is is changing. You know, Ed certainly said it. It, uh, it. it reminds me of the book, you know, The Last Hurrah, that uh, you know, with all the connections and, and, and all of the um, you know old political names and all of the the uh, <coughs> resources, you know. They woke up the next day and said, how did we lose? How did we lose? They, they didn't realize that their community, their city had changed, you know. Uh, so, uh, you know, everyone has to be aware that Brockton is a different place uh, than it was. But I've always said to everyone, you know, it really is uh, the same. It's, it's a city of, of immigrants, but yet the question is, you know, we're dynamic in that it's always changing in terms of where people are coming from, and that's what makes our community interesting. So, so we've got two you know, people that know what they have to do to win, and um, we'll see who works the hardest. It's gonna be interesting, you know? So yeah. I'm gonna love to be here again with, uh, with, with, with my team. I have Ward 5 results that I've just gotten, which are the city summaries uh, from city, city Hall. So let's, uh, I'm gonna blow up the, uh, my little uh, tape here and see if I can figure this out. Jeff Thompson, um, 810 votes in Ward 5. He's the top candidate. Uh, Cindy Ethiakoska is the second candidate 
with 549 votes. Mm -hmm. And Doris Smith is the third candidate with 296 votes. There are a total of 1655 cast. So let me just repeat those numbers. Um, Jeff Thompson, 810 votes. Cindy Co Ethia Koska with 549 votes and Doris Smith with 296 votes. So the two candidates moving on to uh, the November election are Jeff Thompson and Cindy Ethier Koska. Um, I'm going to go to Steve on that one and ask you what you think of those results. Doris has been an activist in the Democratic Party and the unions. Uh, she has run before, and uh, the other two candidates are new candidates. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think it took a lot of people by surprise that Ann Beauregard didn't run for re-election there, and these people had to, you know, come around and throw their candidacies together a little bit late. But uh, uh, I met Jeff Thompson. He was uh, out there working hard, and uh, it all worked hard. Uh, uh, Costco had uh, signs out early. Uh, I know Doris Smith, and I you know she's well known. So uh, kind of a little surprising that the, the newer guy... Uh, was able to prevail, but again, uh, if you add in the second and third place totals, they're more than the first place, so it's still a race come, come November. And like we already alluded to, that uh, in November there's going to be a lot more people coming out to vote. The numbers in the mayor's race are pretty close to what we already gave you. Um, Mark Lawton, instead of 1858, is 1,909, still fourth place. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the totals are holding. Uh, Robert Sullivan, 5,071. 5 uh, Jimmy Pereira, 3,319. And um, Gene Bradley, Gene Bradley yeah. Derencourt, 2,875. Mark Lawton, 1,909. So those numbers have held. I, I do have counselor at large numbers, but I'm going to let you guys talk so I can decipher them <laughs> oh, because yeah. there were so many of them <laughs> that um, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a huge long list. Yeah, it's, uh, we are, I think we'll go now to the video of, uh, from Sullivan headquarters now and we have his uh, speech and uh, what's going on down there. If anybody happened to go up to West Junior High, West Middle School this afternoon, the ironwork is Local 7. There was a hundred of them there strong. The Plumbers and Gas Fitters, Local 12 in the North, being the Carpenters, 723, and the IBEW 2222. But you know what? The biggest endorsement of the voters today, and I want to thank each and every one of you that went to the polls. I, I, I've said this many times. I'm a Brockton guy, and I want to do it for Brockton. And the Brockton people, the citizens, the fine residents of the city of champions, went to the polls today, and I got over 5,000 votes. It was awesome. I truly, truly am humbled. I also want to, I also want to uh, congratulate Jimmy Pereira. Jimmy, Jimmy pulled a great vote, and he came in second. And then my colleague on the city council, Gene Bradley Derencourt, Mark Lawton, Judge Lawton, who is here. I also want to recognize Karina. If you saw her at the debate, oh, Karina was on fire. Yeah. And, uh, uh, my good friend, Bishop Tony Branch, and then Stephen Cruz Figueroa. There were some really good people, good sharing of ideas. That's what makes Brockton, Brockton, right? We all have, and I've said this, we all have different skills, different ideas, and we share them. And that's what's going to propel us from now to November 5th, to be victorious on November 5th. But why I, I want to just say one thing, is without you, Brockton would not be the city of champions because each and every one of you, from the firefighters to the Brockton police, you know, to the teachers, to the DPW, to the nurses, it's everybody, to the great retirees, the veterans, I see the So we're going to enjoy tonight, 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 in celebration. Joe Murray makes the best pizza in the city of Brockton. Enjoy it. But again, I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Let's enjoy tonight when we get out there. The only good thing is we do not have to take down signs tomorrow, Dad. So let's, 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 let's just enjoy tonight. And again, thank you, thank you, thank you. And if you want to volunteer, the campaign office is going to be open on Thursday.
Father's Day, and we're out there. We're in it to win it. So thank you all. Thank you. Robert Sullivan, of course, winner of the mayoral primary. You took a risk jumping into a field with so many candidates. You left your seat on the, the council at large. Uh, talk to us about what it means to get the most support out of all the candidates tonight. Well, you know, it's always an honor um, when you run in the, in the city that you grew up in. My wife and I grew up here in Brockton, and, um, you know, we just run a positive campaign, knocking on doors, listening. You have to be a good listener to be a public servant. And I'm just really, I'm just thrilled um, first of all, that so many people in Brockton voted, number one. It was a good day for Brockton. Um, but I'm just honored that they uh, cast over 5,000 votes for me in the preliminary. And I do want to congratulate all candidates that ran for office. Um, and right now, it, it looks like it's going to be myself and Jimmy Pereira in the finals from November 5th. But um, tonight's just a great night to, uh, to enjoy it. But then tomorrow, we go into a new election. And, um, you know, it's to better Brockton and to work hard for the people that live and work in the City of Champions. You came out on top in... A very crowded field, but it was, going in, it was really a toss-up. You saw, I mean, Gene Bradley Durant, of course, your, your colleague on the council, put up a valiant effort, uh, I believe coming in third. Uh, talk to us about what it means to go up against your friends and colleagues and to ultimately come out on top. Yeah, I mean, one thing about Gene and I, um, we're both councils at large, serving the whole city, um, and we've always had a great relationship. Um, and we'd go to campaigns, uh, events, and debates, and, you know, it was always professional and always two gentlemen. And um, I think that's what it means. You know, that's what people want. They don't want dirty politics. They want, you know, being polite. Um, you know, you can agree to disagree. Uh, and, and that's what we've done all along. But I'm just really honored that the voters went to the polls today. And, again, I'm just going to continue the message of positivity and inclusiveness and, you know, economic development and continuing the economic development and education and public safety. There's so many things that I want to talk about and work collectively with everybody, sharing of ideas to really move Brockton in the great direction. So uh, this is an interesting final now between you and Jimmy Pereira, as you mentioned. I believe two years ago you endorsed Jimmy Pereira against uh, the, the mayor, Bill Carpenter. No, that no, that's not uh, correct. But you guys uh, have become friends over the last couple of years, yes, I believe. Yes, yes. Uh, so talk about what the next couple of months is going to look like. Uh, well, right I mean, I, I can't speak for anybody's campaign other than my own. And, and my campaign, is, again, is always going to be uh, knocking on doors. They call it old-fashioned politics. But it's, you know, talking to people, listening to people, and saying, hey, listen, experience matters. I've been on the council 14 years. I've worked on 14 budgets. I've served under four different mayors. Um, I've been the acting mayor by being the city council president for four times. And I think experience matters when you're talking about the role of mayor, which is the CEO of the city of Brockton. It's a business uh, which is almost a half a billion dollars, 440 million. Um, but I'm just gonna continue to work and, and be who I am. I think Brockton voters realize that. Well, let's turn to your record. As you mentioned, you served the council now for 14 years. Yes. Um, you, you're in it for the long haul and not to date you, but you've been in Brockton politics for a fairly long time. Uh, talk about what's kept you around and, and what keeps you uh, wanting better for Brockton? Well, you know, number one is, is, is it's home, right? I was born and raised here. My wife born and raised here. We didn't leave. We're here, and our three kids are being raised here, two in public schools, one at Trinity Catholic Academy. And, you know, I coach basketball and soccer and, and baseball here at youth sports. And, you know, it's just trying to make a difference, you know, mentoring the youth. And I think to be a public servant. I'm not a politician, I'm a public servant. You're in the people business. You have to work for the people at all times. I've tried to do that, I'm gonna to continue to do that, and I, I, I hope to uh, get the votes out November 5th. All right, if they do come out November 5th and elect you to be the next mayor of the city of Brockton, uh, what are some of the first things that we'll see on your agenda? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is have a, a community engagement meeting. It's a roundtable discussion with uh, residents and business owners, sharing of ideas. You're not going to succeed no matter what you do in life if you don't share ideas and you listen. Um, without the sharing of ideas, Brockton is not going to progress, and we need to progress. It's vitally important for the future of Brockton. My slogan is leadership for Brockton's future, and I think that rings true. You know, we have a bright, bright future, and with leadership, the right leadership in place, you know, there's nothing stopping us. All right, last question. How many wards, how many precincts do you represent? Seven wards, 28 precincts. All right, congratulations. Thank you so much. Have a good and we're back here live in the studio. We do also uh, want to congratulate Robert Sullivan for his first place victory in the preliminary election. On to November with Robert Sullivan and Jimmy Pereira. Let's go over to the council at large race. We do have numbers, and I'm going to run them down. There are 15 candidates, so let's take it slow. Okay, we're going to start with... Um, uh, incumbent Councilor at Large and Interim Mayor Moses Rodriguez topping the ticket at 5,524 votes. 
Next is incumbent Councilor at Large Winter Farwell with 4,070 votes, 4070. Uh, Rita Mendes, first time candidate, new candidate, 3,570 votes. Uh, Ann Beauregard, who took the chance from Ward 5 running for Councilor at Large, she came in fourth, 2,845 votes. Adius Pierre, number five on the ballot, has 2,702 votes, so that's pretty close between Ann Beauregard and uh, Adius Pierre. Next up, Tina Cardoso, number six, 2,562 votes. Uh, Gary Keith at 2,177 votes. Kevin Borges at 1,875 votes for the number eight spot. So those are the eight winners, unofficial winners in the Councilor at Large race moving on to November. In the ninth spot is Ray Henningsen, former school committee member from Ward 7, 1,377 votes. Mark Adams, who's an attorney, 1,252 votes. Larry Curtis, 1,218 votes. Scott Hall, 1,017 votes. Jeanette Kerr, 1,013 votes, so that's a four vote spread. Uh, Bernadine Silvestri, 558 votes. And Alex Cosmetis, 388 votes. There were 109 write ins, total of 32,148 votes. And I started doing, um, I was reading the, uh, the percentages over here. Um, Moses Rodriguez, again, with that many candidates, uh, nobody got any kind of a large plurality. Uh, Moses Rodriguez, 17%. Wynn Farwell, just about 13%. Rita Mendes, 11%, Ann Beauregard, 8.85, but followed very closely behind Adius Pierre, um, who had 2,702 votes, or 8.40%. So the Councilor at Large races are, um, is decided with eight candidates. Uh, the ninth is not close to the eighth, so I don't see any recounts or anything like that. Um, Gentlemen, any reaction? I think Rita Mendez should be extremely pleased with herself. Um, you know, first time coming, uh, first time candidate for counselor at large, correct? Yes. And, you know, taking the third spot, I think that's excellent. I think we all felt that Moses was going to do very well, you know, Mayor Rodriguez right now, and um, you know, certainly Win Farwell, uh, very well known. Um, a couple of, I, I am surprised by a, a couple of the results, but um, uh, I think uh, Kevin Borges um, should be very happy. You know, some people say that uh, we look alike, and um, so I understand now why he came in the eighth, at least in the top tier, so that's, that's, that doesn't surprise me. Um, but Gary Keith, you know, certainly persistence prevailed. You know, he's been working hard for all these years and he certainly has name recognition. Adius Pierre's run for the seat before as well. Mm -hmm. You know, Tina Cardozo has been, um, you know, very active in the community, you know, certainly well-known name. You know, and, and, and people know Ann Beauregard. It's going to now be interesting to see, you know, who slips into the, uh, you know, the top four now you know, from the top eight. So, um, Surprises were Ray Henningsen? Who yeah, I came mean, yeah, in, I mean, came yeah, Ray, in Ray, yeah, Ray has been running, you know, for something for quite some time. He certainly spent a lot of money. Uh, you see a lot of signs out there. Uh, you know, um, I've seen, you know, cars with, you know, his, you know, logo on it. I mean, so uh, I'm a little surprised that, um, you know, uh, he didn't cross into the top tier. But, you know, uh, stranger things have happened. Um, you know, Larry Curtis, you know, very well known. Um, Again, but you know, it, you know, next election, you know, he could certainly slide right up, you know, into the top tier. Um, but um, no, I mean, or Ward Six. Yeah, he's, or, in, yeah, he's in Ward Six. Or Ward Six. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I, 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 uh, I think Kevin Borges, newcomer candidate. Um, yeah, but good-looking guy. Yeah, let's admit it. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> he, I, I used to say, if you just took the, <laughs> him off the poster, it would just be GQ. All yeah, the there way. you go. There you go. He's got those good billboards. He yeah. does. He does. Yeah. So, Stephen Ed, how about your comments on this Kudos race? Kudos to Ed Beauregard, 
given up what, what I would consider an automatic seat pretty much in Ward 5 and being listed 15th on a ballot out of 15 and she finishes fourth, God bless her, she, must, she ran a good race. See, Ed's theory holds water than, more than yours then about the ballot location, right, Ed? Well, well they, they, it's well, just what I believe. Uh, it, too, you know? To be honest, I, I, again, I, I don't put any where you are in the ballot, people are going to find you if they want to vote for you. Uh, I'm not surprised the top three, top four, I'm sorry, uh, three are incumbents, even though Ann moved into uh, the, um, from Ward 5 to Counselor at Large. So I'm not surprised, and again, I said it tonight, and I'll say it, it'll be on my gravestone. If you're running and you're an incumbent, you have a 65% chance of winning. And it, those numbers just kind of prove what, I, uh, what I've always thought. Rita Mendez should be thrilled. Yes, I and for her to come in third, yeah. and now I like Rita, I've interviewed her. Uh, she's a lawyer, she's a real estate agent, and passed both tests the first time. Very smart young woman and very personable. Uh, so I'm surprised that she's third, but I'm not surprised she's third. Ballot position. Um, there you go. Okay. <laughs> I'm, not uh, I'm not surprised that she's third because uh, her husband was her one-man um, sign team. Mm -hmm. right. had signs everywhere, oh, yeah. big signs, uh, a, a completely different slogan, and, and, and a newcomer. A nice person. i got to tell you, I went out during the NAACP candidates forum, uh, visited the men's room, and she told a personal story that I think put her on the map about her coming to this country right. uh, and, 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 and basically being dropped off without a family, and look where she's come. So right. I, I think there's a bright future for her. I have a, a three-minute queue, so I'm going to take the executive privilege at this point. Thank all of you for being here, okay? And I also want to thank the entire campaign team at BCA. Uh, two people in particular I want to thank uh, tonight. I want to thank everybody, and I don't want anyone to get offended. Aaron Tebow, who is directing tonight. Today is his last day with Brockton Community Access after 14 years. On to a new job and a new challenge, and we will certainly miss him, and the community will miss him. And I do want to dedicate this broadcast tonight to the memory of Jay Miller, who was my sidekick for seven years here at BCA, and I knew him for five at the Boys and Girls Club. It wasn't the same election without him, and it won't be the same election without Aaron Tebow in the future. Um, I want to thank Phil, I want to thank Mike, Matt, newbie who came back, um, the whole team here, um, and um, my wife Terry, Muriel, who is our administrative assistant here, and our, our volunteer extraordinaire. Um, so here's what I want you to do. I want you to look at all these results, I want you to digest them, and everybody needs a little break, and then Go out there, research the candidates. November is just around the corner. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the final turnout was. It was 20% as of about 6, six o'clock. I think Cindy predictions, former Commissioner McGarry's predictions of 20 to 25% probably held true. And let's do even better in November. Make sure you learn about the candidates on Brockton Community Access and on the radio mm -hmm. as well with Ed Miller. 95 percent. That's what I want to say. Yes, and, and, and Tom has a, a, a tribute as well. Uh, I would just like to say, um, you know, I, I'd like to recognize, you know, Mayor Bill Carpenter, who was a friend to all of us and did so much for the city and left us far too soon. Um, you know, God bless him and, and his whole family uh, because uh, he was just a great friend, a wonderful person, and um, a big personality in the city who we're all going to miss very much. Absolutely. And gentlemen, thank you. It's great to be here. We'll be back in November and on to debates and educational forums. Um, everybody's going to be out there in the field. Um, and remember, if you don't vote, don't complain. Thank you, voters of Brockton, for showing that we truly are a city of champions. On behalf of Brockton Community Access, Thank you for watching.